guys, I recently made a blog post about uh, custom dates and parameters and how you can leverage custom dates and parameters to uh, change the aggregation of dates in one of your dashboards. And where this might be useful is let's say you have some operational data. In my example here, I'm looking at the number of admissions to my fictitious Jackson Hospital, but this could easily be anything. And there's you know data always funneling in. So at the maybe frontline level, someone needs to know on a daily basis, how many admissions are we getting in? But if I'm a middle manager, perhaps maybe I wanna look at that over larger um, buckets of time. So maybe I wanna look at that by weeks. And then you can even imagine that if I'm maybe more senior leadership, I'm kind of looking at those sort of monthly trends. So what we're using here is a parameter to quickly adjust how our different number of admissions are being bucketed. And you can even see I've added an average line on here so you can easily see, okay, what's going on over time and, and how things are increasing. And so this is a really easy way to add a lot of value to your dashboards. Another thing you'll notice is that I've sort of set in here kind of define limitations for these. If I were to look at the weeks, I'm only going back to June of this year. If I were to look at days, I'm only going back to the end of the last month. And if I were to look at months, you can see, okay, I'm actually pulling in, you know, like 12 months of, of data. So how do, is this possible and, and how can you set it up? All right, let me switch gears right here and pull this up. So there's a couple things going on here and mostly it relies on using custom dates. And I want to kind of pause because I'm guessing some of you are saying, well, why wouldn't we just use the, you know, built-in hierarchical or drill-through features for dates that Tableau has built in? And that's a good question. Maybe that suits your needs. Sometimes I don't have ultimate control over uh, what my end users do with the dashboard. So I like to set them up for success and really help them zero in on the data that's important for them to do uh, that data discovery, data analysis that they're doing on their end. So you can kind of see here, and I'll demonstrate, if I were to just simply pull on the number of records, which again for my data set represents the total number of admissions and the admission date, yes, we get that nice line chart and I can start drilling through. But very quickly it gets very hairy. I've got the quarters on there, I've got the month, and then I've got the day, and we're really kind of slicing through the data. I could work through it and make this uh, continuous and we could you know, start adjusting from there but it's not gonna be a super great experience. So what we can do instead is uh, leverage custom dates and parameters. So all we need to do to start is we're gonna right click on whatever our date is and we're going to create a custom date. And from here, you'll pick from the detail what you want. You're gonna end up picking the date value for each of these. I've already gone through the step because I'm gonna end up with three, so we've got the days, the months, and the week numbers, and that's denoted by just exactly what it shows in this drop down. So if I select days, it's gonna add that parenthesis days. If I were to select months, it would do parenthesis months, and if I did week numbers, it would do parenthesis week numbers. Once we've got that in place, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna create a parameter. Again, to save time, I've already kinda of done this for you. So I've named this select the date aggregation. This is gonna be a string, and we're gonna have three values for the user to select from. It's gonna be days, weeks, or months, which corresponds to those custom dates that we selected. Let's immediately go ahead and show that parameter control. So here we have that same dropdown that I showed in the beginning. We've got days, weeks, and months. Now, as we all know with parameters, they don't do anything until we um, help give them purpose. So what we need to do is leverage our custom dates that we made and our parameter to determine what's gonna go on one of our uh, columns or maybe rows. So here we go here, I've got this other calculated field and this is where we'll invoke our parameter. So I've called it set the date aggregation and we're gonna have a case statement. So case, select the date aggregation, that's our parameter, that's why it's purple. When it's set to days, then we want the admission date in days. When it's weeks, then admission date in week numbers and when it's months, then the admission date in months. And, and then I've even commented here, sets so the field based on the parameter input. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that up on column. You'll notice that it still thinks that Tableau notices and recognizes that this is a date type and it's gonna give that hierarchical drill through again. We don't, we don't want that for this, so we're gonna just set it to exact date. Right now it's on months, we could set it to days and you can see stuff's already kind of happening. These are just the different dates. 
Let's put our number of records back on there and let's go ahead and make it a bar chart to look more similar to what we had before. And I believe it was discrete. Okay. So at this point, we're getting pretty close. We've got by the each individual day, we've got the number of admissions I can toggle now. And now it is aggregating by the week and then it's aggregating by the month. The last step would be to create filters on this to adjust our views to limit the kind of look back window for our users. And because I know this is a data set that's gonna get added to every day, I'm always gonna be using today as a reference point for uh, those viewing the data. So here's our kind of last step and I'm kind of doing this in, in two parts here. So we're gonna kind of we're not going to use a case statement, we're going to use if statements, but similar logics. So if the select the date parameter is set to date, then we're going to add negative 30 days to today. Else, if it's set to weeks, then we're going to add negative 15 weeks to today. Else, if it's month, we're going to add negative 12 months to today. And that is what I'm going to call our minimum date for the date filter. The last step would be to create the date filter where we define what we want in the view. So I've got my minimum date filter for the date filter. So our admission date should always be greater than or equal to our minimum date for the date filter. And just for you know the sake of efficiency, we want our admission date you know, within our data, our data date, so to speak, to be less than or equal to today. That way, if for some unknown reason, we got some bad data written in there, it would never show up on our dashboards. Go ahead and click OK and drop that on there and set it to true. Okay, so you can see that we had 1-1-2015 for the months and that's switched to 9-1-2015. And this is the part I'm kind of doing in two steps here. You can see that September 1 only has 120 records. That's not what we would expect. And if I were to take that filter off, you can see that there's actually 3,461. And the reason why it's off is because of how we set that minimum date filter. I actually subtracted 12 months from today so that's one day in September 2015. And we would see something very similar if we went to the weeks. We're going to be going back 15 weeks from today. So it's a Friday right now. We'd be starting on a Friday. So we not have the right information when we were showing our view. To adjust for that, we're just going to add on our date trunk. So we're going to truncate to the week. And we're going to do that on today. And then the same thing here. We're going to date trunk on the month for today. And I have missed two sets of parentheses at the end there. Okay. So now what we're saying is add negative 15 weeks to the truncated date of today at the week level. So what that's really going to do is say, okay, you know, today it's 930. The start of the week was the 25th. So it's going to, this date is going to resolve to the 25th. So then we're going to subtract 15 weeks from the 25th. And same thing here. This is now going to be instead of 930, it's going to be 9-1-2016. And then it's going to subtract 12 months. Go ahead and click apply and look at that. We have now got our 3,461 records. And if I switched over to weeks, my June uh, first week would be completely filled out. And again, you can imagine that you could use this parameter on other things. Again, I in the beginning, I was demonstrating that average line. You could set goals and do you know KPIs based off of this. But this is a really great, easy way for you to limit the dates for your users, but allow them to interact and change the aggregation so that they gain broader insight on their data. Enjoy.